Live Long and Die Laughing, Chapter 44, God Loves Doubters Too. A friend called and read me the lyrics to a song that was written by Kyle Matthews. It was incredible. I called Kyle and we talked about philosophies, doctrines, and reasons for doing what we do. We talked for several hours about God and Christ and grace and deliverance and freedom. Kyle was raised in a Baptist household too. Like me, he's from Texas and he's curious about God. I love to talk with people who are curious about God, people who have more questions than answers. I don't think God is intimidated by our questions. I don't even think he has much trouble with our doubts. He said in Isaiah, come, let us reason together. Wow, can you imagine trying to reason with God? Have you ever talked with someone who is infinitely smarter and wiser than you are? Yet they consider your puny ideas and words important. Think of it. Almighty God invites us to reason with him. And he is willing to condescend to entertain our ideas and comments and to discuss our questions and doubts. When I first heard that J.D. Sumner had died, this thought popped into my mind. I hope I told him right. It's easy to sit in a lazy boy talking with one of your heroes, telling him funny stories between statements of faith, hope, and grace. But when the fella dies, there's no more time to get it right or to explore other points of view. The questions are over. Hopefully, the conclusions we came to were correct. I remember reading The Grace Awakening by Chuck Swindoll. That book is a marvelous glimpse into the grace of God. As I was reading it, I tried to tell J.D. all that I was learning. J.D. only had an eighth grade education, but he was educated by life beyond his years. You never had to have a dictionary around to know what J.D. was talking about. He could make it very clear. He could put the cookies on the lower shelf, so to speak. And when we discussed God's grace and other spiritual concepts, it was so wonderful to watch the truth dawn on J.D. as he thought it through. I could see it in his eyes. I watched as his mind opened up to the wonder of it all. It was amazing. In the process, it was as though I was learning about grace all over again myself. The glory of it. The risk of it and just how big it is. Shortly after J.D. died, Bill premiered his new video, Singing in My Soul, at the Ryman Auditorium. About halfway through the video, Tanya Goodman Sykes sings Look For Me, a song written by her dad, Rusty Goodman, a longtime gospel singer who passed away several years ago. Besides being Tanya's daddy, Rusty was Howard Goodman's brother, After Tanya finished singing, Howard spoke poignantly about his own struggles. Howard confided that the devil had been coming into his room at night and making him question his faith. The devil pummeled Howard with doubt-inducing questions. Are you sure this is all true? Is there really a heaven? Do you really think you'll see your family again? Howard admitted his doubts, but he said, Because of our time together singing about the Lord, it had reassured him once again that the gospel is true. Then Roger Bennett grabbed the microphone and told us when he first learned he had cancer, he saw himself in the future, on his deathbed, wondering, when I close my eyes, will it be oblivion or the new Jerusalem? But I must trust Jesus just like a child. Do you know that God loves doubters? He really does. God is not shaken by our questions or our uncertainties. He is not put out by our honest doubts when we just can't figure out the answer. I'm fascinated when I meet someone who is so sure of everything and thinks they have all the big issues in life figured out. They are either a super saint or they are super stupid. On a good day, I'm right there with them, believing in the face of my doubts. But some days are tough, and you have to walk by faith rather than feelings. I prefer seeing to believing, 
But seeing wasn't God's choice for us. He chose faith. He knew that would be a lot more interesting. Jesus didn't reject Thomas because he was a doubter. Ten disciples told Thomas they'd seen the master. This was after Christ had been executed, buried, and dead for three days. Thomas told them, unless I see the nail holes in his hands and stick my hand in his side, I won't believe it. John 20, 25. Now this boy was having some serious doubts. And you know what? If I'd been there, I probably would have said the same thing. I have tried to imagine if Christ had been crucified in my lifetime, would I need to see him to believe he'd risen? Probably. People have said they've seen Elvis, but I don't believe them. My mama told me Christ is alive, but that's not the reason I believe it. Hymns, sermons, and testimonies have told me all my life Christ is alive. Preachers, scholars, and even the Bible says Christ is risen. But that's not the reason I believe it. I believe Christ is alive because I actually see him working in my heart and life. Thomas didn't believe until he had his own encounter with Christ. But neither did the other disciples. Everybody needs to have his or her own encounter with Jesus. We have to meet him for ourselves. We can't believe in something with such eternal consequences on just hearsay. After Thomas spoke those words of doubt, Jesus said to him, Take your finger and examine my hands. Take your hand and stick it in my side. Don't be unbelieving. Believe. Thomas believed, wouldn't you? Jesus has always had room in his heart for doubters. Remember when the disciples were on the boat and the storm blew, the ship rocked and Jesus slept? The disciples cried out, Don't you care that we perish? Jesus said, Oh, you of little faith. Then he calmed the sea, settled their fears, and should have forever demolished their doubts about who he was, you would think. But he didn't. Jesus told Thomas, So you believe because you've seen with your own eyes. Even better blessings are in store for those who believe without seeing. See that? We can expect better blessings. That's why I've always said we Baptists are more blessed than you Pentecostals. You get miracles, healings, and see angels quite often. Vestal Goodman and Dottie Rambo have angels over for lunch on a regular basis. Angels never visit me unless it's one of those unawares angels. But I still believe in the gospel. I believe without seeing. And Jesus said even better blessings are in store for those who believe without seeing. I'm just kidding. God knows Baptists get more miracles than we deserve. Hold on. The phone is ringing. I'll be back. That was my friend Terry. My friends and I have been praying for Terry to be healed of prostate cancer. He had the surgery. Well, guess what? God answered our prayers. All the tests came back negative. Terry's doctor said this one baffles him. Terry told him it was a miracle, and the doctor agreed. Uh-oh, I just witnessed a miracle. Does this mean I'm not Baptist anymore? I believe Help thou mine unbelief by Gloria Gaither. I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. I take the finite risk of trusting like a child. I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. I walk into the unknown trusting all the while. I long so much to feel the warmth that others seem to know. But if I never feel a thing, I claim him even so. The end.